what's good y'all your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out savage promos and modern wwe feuds by let's go wrestling link to the original video will be down below in the description y'all go subscribe to him check out uh um his channel um i saw this in like one of the recommended videos i was like, you know what let me check this out this seems very interesting you know i'm i'm big on great promos hyping up a match or selling a match making you want to see it that much more a good promo can sometimes save a few you know and it, it definitely enhances that uh wrestler's character you know them being able to go to that place and and make it a little bit personal makes that match that much better so we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel and let's get right into this one promos are the lifeblood of professional wrestling feuds they can turn a shit angle into something magical now the actual match might still end up being hot garbage, but that's beside the point. Today, let's look at some happen. of the most savage promos in modern wrestling feuds. Maybe this company will be better after of course. Roman uh, Reigns, John Cena. When it Cena. comes to promos, mm. few people are as untouchable as John Cena is on the mic. Mm -hmm. And the night you made the most noise was ironically the night your microphone was turned silent. The former doctor of Togonomics has built a career out of owning other superstars with truth bombs, and there's no yeah we we saw it with with uh with austin theory before wrestlemania this year he cooked him that's still he, i've never seen someone get cooked like that before a big match to the point where it's like damn bro like is he really gonna win because <laughs> he got cooked <laughs> damn do i even want austin theory to win now <laughs> damn better example of this than with Roman Reigns. This happened during the contract signing for their match Legendary at No segment. Mercy. Now, this was at a time when the Tribal Chief was still pretty green on the mic. You are a sniveling little suck-up sellout full of suffering suck -tash, son! What? It's really worth noting how so much cringe. better he's become since. More on that later. Roman never stood a chance here to begin with. John Cena destroys him off rip, calling him a cheap ass corporately created John Cena bootleg. Because when they look at you, they see what I see. A cheap ass corporately he created cook, he John cook. Cena bootleg. He cooked And while Roman here. got a few retorts here and there, when it looked like he forgot his lines, oh boy, it was all over with. Yep. Cena exposes his lack of promo skills. It's called a promo Shut kid. Your mouth, if you want to be the big dog, you're going to have to learn how to do it. So go ahead. No, he he was cooking him. There, uh, I think there's a report saying that this was part of the script where Roman was per supposed to pretend that he forgot his lines, but I don't believe that. I do think he kind of did forget his lines. And John, being John, untouchable, can literally say damn near whatever he want. We saw it. He did it with The Rock. He, the Rock of all people, he did that same instance with The Rock. And that's why The Rock really had some real beef with him backstage. Because he pretty much exposed the fact that he had his promos written on his wrist. And then it, it, it got personal there. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, John Cena, he'll definitely do that. <laughs> Roman tries to make a comeback, but the fans simply weren't buying it. You're a yes man who can learn how to do anything or be anything. Cena calls Roman a damn fool, and that there's a saying, it's better to keep your mouth shut and have people think you're stupid than to open it and prove them right. Cena seals the deal by saying how Reigns should be ashamed because Cena can do it as a part-timer better than Roman could ever do it full-time. That was cold. should be ashamed I'm a part-timer because I can do this part-time better than you can full-time. ever do it full-time. And folks, this is why five years later, Roman <laughs> decided to become a part-timer as well. Yep. Roman would eventually bounce back and beat Cena under match. But on this night, the big dog got turned into Cena's little bitch. <laughs> John Cena AJ, AJ Styles, Styles this was also a good got one too. victimized by John Cena on Victim the mic earlier that <laughs> year. Victimized. In the weeks leading up to their five-star worthy match at Royal Rumble, the phenomenal one and the leader of the C Nation had a verbal sparring to hype up their match. Though AJ Styles got a few jabs in there, talking about how he's the one holding it down while Cena left, and that Cena knows he's the better man. It was John Cena, however, who completely goes off and turns the phenomenal one into the sad one. He says that Styles has only been hot for six months, but he's the one who held the place down for like a decade. Dude, you've been hot for like six months. I held this place down for well over a decade. Oh, it's true. It's <laughs> he also disses that. It's crazy because John Cena, he has a list of people he just be cooking. He stay, he's always been able to cook people 
on the microphone, which is crazy. <laughs> indie scene a bit, saying... I wasn't built for the indie scene. I was built for the WWE, for SmackDown Live, for the Royal Rumble, for moments like right here, right now! And now AJ is nowhere near his level, shutting him up for good. Speaking of AJ Styles, mm. the phenomenal one would be the this target of a verbal too. assault from Samoa Joe at oh, SummerSlam man. 2018. In the weeks prior, Joe has been weirdly obsessed on targeting AJ's family, calling AJ out for not being a good father and husband. This would all finally reach a climax at SummerSlam, oh. as during the middle of their match, Samoa Joe would grab a microphone and tell AJ's wife and kid, who are in the front row, This is so good. Your new new daddy. daddy. Oh my god, that this was so good. This infuriates AJ, who would eventually come out on top. Oh man, Samoa Joe deserved a <laughs> world championship. You deserve better, Samoa Joe. You deserve so much better. <laughs> the pandemic era might not be looked at with fondness for wrestling fans, but one of the bright spots of this time was Drew McIntyre's great WWE Championship run. It's a shame we never got to see it with the live crowd, since he had a lot of great feuds, one of which was with Randy Orton. During the build-up for their title match at SummerSlam, he tells a story of how Vince at one time or another once told both of them how they were the chosen ones and the future mm -hmm. of this industry. But things didn't go quite as planned. Drew literally spat some hard facts on Randy's career. Mm -hmm. How Orton's early accolades were fed to him on a silver platter. Hey, we gotta put respect on Drew. Drew did hold it down for the early part of the pandemic. Before Roman Reigns became like, you know, the, the champ. He definitely did hold it down, bro. I'm not even gonna hold you. Drew McIntyre. Wish he could have really won the championship in front of a crowd at WrestleMania. He held it down. We got to put respect on his name. He held it down for WWE until Roman came back. He did, bro. Not, not even going to hold you. Because his dad was Cowboy Bob Orton, or how unlike Orton, he never had anyone like Evolution's influence to clean up his mess. And when he made his mistakes, he got punished and even got fired for mm -hmm. it. But oh man, perhaps my favorite line of this entire promo was when Drew had this to say. Deserved to get fired. I've been fired way more times than I was fired. Not to be undone, mm. Randy Orton delivers a savage receipt, admitting that he should have been fired multiple times, but mm -hmm. he wasn't and Drew was, because he's more valuable to the company than Ooh, McIntyre ever yeah. were or ever will be. I am more valuable to this company than you ever were or ever will be. Yeah. I miss you, Randy. He calls himself the chosen one then, now, and forever. This was an intense back and forth between two of the top guys in the industry that really hyped up their ensuing match. Fact. When That's it comes not to me. Great that was the video, y'all. The little popping <laughs> rivalries. Sasha Banks and Charlotte Flair has to be there at the top. It's no denying that Sasha Banks is really great when it comes to in-ring skills, mm -hmm. but the legit boss can be savage at times in the mic as well. A week after losing the Raw Women's title to Sasha, Charlotte made the biggest mistake of her life by calling her a one-night stand. Banks destroys Flair by saying, You're the daughter of Ric Flair. If it wasn't for a one night Woo. stand, you probably want to be standing here. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Absolute Woo. savagery. savagery. Now, the other half of the four horsewomen had some great verbal encounters as well. The row after Royal Rumble, Bailey and Becky Lynch got into a heated exchange, with mm -hmm. Bailey sparing no insult to Becky here. She calls her overrated, and how she's not even good enough for his husband, Seth Rollins, and Ooh. that the only reason he married Becky is because he knocked her up. Legit. That, that was good. I, I, we watched that. Oh man, I was like, ooh, okay, a little spice, a little edge, I'm with it. Triggered by this. Almost as if she wasn't expecting this kind of personal attack from Bailey. Yeah. What an absolute heel. Good. That was good. Definitely, definitely was good by Bailey. The New Day and the Usos had a legendary rivalry that spanned for multiple years. Mm -hmm. One of the best things to ever come out of it this was, was a rap battle too. that happened during the lead up to their match on Battleground this 2017. Was so good. Now, this segment has too many great back and forth from both teams mm -hmm. that it deserves a personal watch. So I'll just show here some of my favorite ones. Ready it all like your boy Xavier Woods. <laughs> Jamaican? Nah, you were just faking. But please always remember you were absolutely nothing till your wife put you on total diva. You should get back to doing what you do best, and that's carrying bags for who? That's carrying bags for Roman. 
<laughs> Looking ahead oh, to more. I, I said it. <laughs> John Cena on this list a lot. He stay cooking. <laughs> Recent examples. We see Austin Theory offering a returning John Cena a gift to challenge him for the US title at rest. He cooked this nigga Austin Theory. He preheated the oven at at least 350 degrees. Preheated for 15 minutes. Put him in that bad boy. Cooked him. Cooked him. Took it out. Put it on top of the oven, let it cool off. Served it, served it up to the masses. WrestleMania <laughs> 39. But Cena wasn't having it. He tore this man apart like it's nobody's business. He pretty much validates what fans think about Austin Theory. Just like every single person in here, we don't care about you. And why fans don't care about him? Because they don't believe in him. He says Theory is in his face of ruthless aggression, which almost got Cena fired in his early days. Mm -hmm. And now he's a pair of trunks away from being a jabroni. You're a pair of trunks away from being a jabroni. John Cena says Austin Theory has the best name in WWE history because that's exactly what he is. There is no name better than Austin Theory because that's exactly what you are. Cooking him. A theory. Cena ends by saying the US champ doesn't have it in the head, doesn't have it in the heart, heart. and doesn't have it in the uh, other Bruh. head. Man, this was a verbal undressing unlike anything I've ever yeah. seen. Their match at WrestleMania should be a passing of the torch moment for Austin it Theory unless torch. Cena wins lol. Oh, I'm guessing he uh he re probably recorded this before then, but I mean it it didn't really pass the torch. It didn't. And I think the problem is because we kind of figured John was going to lose here, but it wasn't a passing of the torch moment because you got to look at it like Theory didn't really bring anything to really combat John Cena here, you know, and they hadn't really built him up in a sense for him to be that credible guy, the next guy up, you know, like I, it's not that he can't be. He's decent in the ring. He's OK on the promos. He's not bad on the promos. He gets some good heel heat. But I, I think, I think it's, he's, he's one of those, I guess you could say wrestlers that it, it may take the right feud, the right feud to get him over the hump. It's like he's right there, but it's going to take the right feud or maybe the right match, the right person to be in a ring with to get him over that hump. Because people don't, I don't really see them care as much for him as he's been pushed and booked yes he's beat john cena but it doesn't feel like it was earned it feel like john cena did the job but it wasn't earned or whatnot and especially the way that promo segment went down i was expecting theory to give me some of that ruthless aggression i was hoping anybody cook me like that i'm coming for the jugular you know what i'm saying like i need i'm coming for the jugular you feel me so i, I don't know Hopefully they can really bring that interest back in theory um, going forward. Give him some type of edge, a little bit more of an edge, not just him just being a, a heel, but more just like a heel like that you can invest in. Like Dominic, people care about Dominic in the sense of they want to see him get beat. People are indifferent if theory gets beat. If he gets beat, people are like, all right, cool. But it's it's not like people are clamoring to give him that super mega heel heat. So I don't know. We'll see what they do with him. I do think he can potentially be the future of the company. They just got to find something for him to really sink his teeth into and, and really get him over. The next one is definitely one of my favorite confrontations for a WrestleMania main event feud as Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns meet yeah. face to face for the first time to hype up their main event match this for WrestleMania 39. Cody, kiss. as prolific in the mic as ever, had a couple of great lines here talking about how Roman has become an impossible mountain to climb for some and how he's been overcoming those impossibilities his entire career and at one point even makes a reference to All In. Goalpost moved again. There's no way that 10,000 people would pay to see me and my buddy's little indie show. Mm -hmm. So for everybody else, Roman Reigns might be impossible. Possible. Just not for me. Remember when I mentioned earlier how much better Roman has been with his mic skills since? Yeah, this is proof of that. Roman's response was straight up.
Actually, I hope he has that on the list where fucking Roman cooked Austin Theory. <laughs> the f fire. Starting off by playing to Cody's lack of main event experience first. Let me uh, switch gears here. Uh, let me ask you a question. You ever won that one? Oh. Have you ever even competed for one of these? Ooh. Have you ever been in the main event of WrestleMania before? Then saying that he's been groomed for the main event by not only his father, but Cody's father Dusty Rhodes as well. Mm -hmm. He says that Dusty was the first man that put the confidence in him and even made a damn fine Dusty impression. You yeah. Couldn't sell it if you wanted to. You yeah, that impression it. was great. Then Roman went full on savage. He asks Cody if he wanted to know what Dusty always used to say about him. Ooh, this is good. You know what he used to always say about you? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> when he's with Dusty, it was like Cody did not even exist. Roman talks about missing Dusty some more, but as he picks up his titles, he goes for the kill by saying, If there's anything that he didn't teach you, I will. <laughs> he would respond back calling Roman one of Dusty's fabled kids and making a reference to what Paul Heyman said weeks prior mm -hmm. about Roman being the son Dusty always wanted. You, Cody, were his favorite son. But Roman Reigns was the son, son he always wanted. wanted. Cody says that if that's the truth, then it's now become a necessity for him because the only way he can validate his existence is by beating Roman at WrestleMania. It's a masterclass in promo work from both men. It didn't happen, with no. Roman showing the world why he's the top dog in the business and Cody delivering his message with so much passion and emotion. The fact that this didn't need any beatdown angle and they just shook hands after says Which it all. Was Mmm, chef's kiss. That's what I loved about this. No beat down angle. No one else in the ring. They shook hands. And that was it. Ah, and we still didn't get the result. We probably should have gotten. Uh, 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 will he ever finish the story? Find out. <laughs> Two of the hottest acts in wrestling having a war of words. You love to see it. Last but not least, Seth Rollins this and is, Matt Riddle. This was a really good This is good the closest one. to a work shoot style promo Facts. I've seen WWE do in quite some time. This was Rollins so and Riddle good. have had real life heat even before coming to blows in a wrestling ring. This heat finally reached a boiling point <laughs> when both men so had a sit down good. interview with Corey Graves a week before their match at Clash of the Castle. The promo starts off pretty standard with both men bickering over each other. Towards the end of the interview, is where it really starts to get interesting mm. as Riddle decides to take the first spot shot pun intended saying there's only one man in your marriage and that's Becky bro <laughs> Corey Graves cuts the interview short with a furious so looking Seth Rollins good. but that is far from the end of it the commentators cut to a footage after the interview oh, this Seth asks fantastic, if Riddle bro. was still there then proceeds to make some disgusting comments about his family Let's talk about your family <laughs> oh wait you ain't got one because your wife divorced you and took your kids and they don't want to see your bitch ass anymore huh? Riddle loses his mind understandably so and threatens Rollins saying this dude you don't get I'm not gonna beat you up I'm oh. gonna f you up bro what the f Right, that was so I was genuinely good. shocked when I saw this for the first time. <laughs> oh no one expected Rollins to go this low and oh, air out no, Riddle's personal crazy. problems on live television. What made it so much oh, more effective is God. that they were both in faraway undisclosed locations, which just added to the tension even more. Oh, that was fantastic. That that's still Oh, that's when I knew because at this point Triple H was head of creative. That's when I knew, okay, we we in a different bag now because I don't think Vince would let this go off. I don't think he would let this ride. This, oh, this was mm, still one of my favorite promos. The match itself didn't, for me, it, it didn't really, you know, live up to it. Like their, their fight pit match. It was okay. It, it was, it was, it was serviceable. I, I, you know. Oh, actually, no. They ended up having a match at Clash at the Castle. Uh, I think, yeah, Clash at the Castle. The match was okay. It, I, I actually preferred that one more than the Fight Pit, personally. Um, that match was actually pretty decent. I thought it was going to be a little bit different. But they, they played up the story that Seth pretty much was getting under Matt Riddle's skin so much that he lost focus. And, and that's how he was able to get the win. The match was good. The match was good. But the promo to it? was better now the fight pitch fight pit was okay it was it wasn't the worst you know it was okay it was serviceable well, i was expecting it to be a little bit better but um yeah this promo segment man that was the man boys was hype i was like okay this is what i want to see 
from my adult wrestling show. He got personal. It felt real. It felt believable. And I was all for it, man. So comment down below. Let me know some other savage promos in modern WWE feuds that you can remember of recent past few years or whatnot. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all of the support. Once again, y'all go subscribe to the channel. Let's go wrestling. I'm going to link this down uh, below. The link to the original video will be down below in the description. Uh, description. Go subscribe. Uh, let them know I sent you. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all keeping me. See you on the next one. Peace.